Hi, this is Paolo from Drum Bass Academy, and in this video I'm going to be showing you the best way to learn techie drum bass sound design like DLR, Break, and many more using Serum. And we're going to be doing this by number one, learning how to reverse engineer Serum presets, and number two, put this in practice and build new sounds with all of those techniques. And to do this we're going to be using our brand new preset pack bundle, Bristol Tech, inspired by labels like Sofa Sounds Bristol, Despatch Recordings, Symmetry Recordings, etc. So the sound that we're going to be focusing on is this one. In a bit of context, it sounds like this. And we're going to be learning how to reverse engineer sounds to find out what makes this type of sounds. So let's get started. The first step of reverse engineering sounds is to start from the end. That means that we need to start from the very last stage of the sound, which in this case will be the effects go back to the filters, then the oscillators, and while we do that in the process we're going to take a look at the different modulations that are happening in the sound. So let's head into the effects section and let's organize all of the different effects. And we're going to be using the bypass button to compare the sound before and after. So let's start with the last one, the filter. This is with the filter on. Now off. Looks like it's just taming a bit of the highs. Now let's see what happens with the EQ. Looks like the EQ is being used to clean a very resonant frequency. So this makes us learn that whenever we have a sound that has a lot of noise, we may want to use EQs to clean those walls of noise. Next is the multiband compressor. And what this multiband compressor is doing is actually adding a lot of sub. So let's see what's happening with the sub band. And in fact, there's a boost of 65% in the sub. So whenever we have a sound that is kind of weak in the sub frequencies, we can use a multiband compressor instead of serum and boost the sub band. which is going to be super useful when we're creating this type of basses that need to have a really strong fundamental. Next we have the distortion module, so this is what it sounds like with the distortion on. Now off. So looks like the distortion is actually doing a bit of gain reduction. And that is because this, there's 0% drive on this module. So this is not a technique, but it's actually something really interesting, which is that distortion on 0% of drive adds gain reduction into the sound. So let's continue. Now we have the hyper effect. This is with on and now off. So in this case, it looks like the hyper effect is adding a bit of movement into the high frequencies. Let me use the EQ to illustrate. So if we solo the highs, we can notice kind of a flanger effect in the highs, so now if we turn it off, we can really hear the difference that the hyper is doing into the sound. So whenever we want to add a more interesting movement into the high frequencies, we can use the hyper effect. So all of these small details can build a really professional sound. So now let's go into the oscillator tabs and explore the filter. So first of all, let's turn off the filter and hear what's happening with the sound. Looks like the filter is adding a lot of distortion. So let's explore the different macros and modulations that are happening in the filter. So first of all, we can see that the routing of the filter is different from the default one. We have oscillator A routed into the filter, so let's try with it and without it. So without oscillator A into the filter, we can only hear the noise and not oscillator A, and that is because the drive knob in the filter is boosted 100%, and that distorts the sub a lot. So one thing that we're learning right here is that you can use a filter as a secondary distortion module if you turn up the drive to 100%. Now let's see what happens when we remove the noise. Oh, 
all of the interesting textures on the highs are getting removed because we don't have the noise. So we can see that what makes the sound is a very distorted sub and also a very distorted noise coming together. Now let's try to find out where is the movement happening. Because we can see that this little notch is kind of moving left and right real quick. And probably is because of this LFO. So if we click on the LFO, we can notice that the cutoff has a small modulation right here. Now once again, we can use the bypass function, right click on the knob, select bypass and compare with and without it. So this is without it. And this is with it. Okay, so looks like this LFO modulating the cutoff of this filter is creating that cool movement in the low frequencies. So let's see what happens if we move the cutoff. The resonance spot where that movement happens changes and that changes the tonality of the sound. So we're learning that we can use this filter NN, which means double notch, and modulate the notches with another fold to create this vibrato effect. Next, we have the resonance knob, which hasn't been modified. Also the pan, we already saw the drive knob. And then the frequency one. Looks like it's bringing the sub down. So the frequencies on top of it can get distorted and we get something else other than just a distorted sub. Now we can even apply the thing we learned with the cutoff into this other knob, but let's drag LFO1 into the frequency. And now we just added even more movement into the sound from a principle we learned one minute ago. So that is the filter section. We also have this small keyboard button on and looks like It makes the cutoff of the filter move with the different notes that we're playing. So when we have a preset like this that has very specific frequencies, we need to use the key track function so the filter stays relevant to every single key of the keyboard. And that is also a very useful principle. So now let's turn off the filter and let's take a look at our sources. So let's turn off the noise oscillator. And we can see that this oscillator is set to a simple sine wave, but it has different waveforms. And those create different tonalities. So let's turn on the noise and the filter. So we're seeing that if we change the initial waveform that is gonna get distorted, we're gonna get new harmonics out of this distortion. And we can also explore the wavetable creator Click on the button to translate into FFT harmonics and we can learn the different combinations of harmonics that create these waveforms. So we can even apply this at a new waveform and then try to come up with our own version of a new waveform. This one sounds pretty good. And so far we're learning tons of stuff about different sound sources that we can use for these types of basses. So now let's get into the noise oscillator. And we can see that there's also an LFO modulating the level. So let's bypass this modulation. Turn it on again. And we can see that there's a small tremolo effect into the level of this oscillator. And we can also see that the pitch macro is being modified. So what happens if we put everything back together and we move the pitch knob? So we can see that there's a different place where the noise is going to resonate based on the pitch of it. And now the last step into reverse engineering the sounds is to build it back up from the initial position. So we already turned on oscillator A and the filter. So let's go into the effects, turn on the hyper. Once again, there's the movement on the highs. 
Now the distortion. A bit of gain reduction because of no drive. Then the multiband compressor is adding that sub boost. And then this EQ is cleaning those mids. And then there's more notches that now we understand because we saw how the main filter works. And so these notches are just taming specific frequencies that make the sound a bit more cohesive overall. So just from exploring this preset, we'll learn tons of different techniques and principles in how synthesis for this type of basses works. So now let's get into a different preset and try to apply some of these principles to build a new sound. Okay, so here I have this sound. And this one is perfect to practice the different principles that we learn from the other preset. So let's get started. Let's first of all turn on the noise. And then let's run everything through the filter. Let's go back into that double notch filter. Route oscillator A and the noise. Key track it. And then crank up the drive. And that's already a great sound. We can even leave it like that. Next, let's play with the different notches. And with the mix of layers. And we can also add the movement into the cutoff of the notches. Make it faster. And as you can see, we're getting many different sounds out of this preset just by applying two techniques from the last one. Now let's jump into the effects and let's add the hyper effect into the sound just so we get more interesting movement into the highs and then we can use the multiband compressor to shape the different frequencies of our sound. So let's add some sub and maybe tame a bit of the highs. And now let's add the EQ from the last preset and clean some of the mids. And there you go, which has got a brand new original sound. So as you can see, reverse engineering sounds, picking up techniques and then applying them into new sounds can have great results. And there's one very important principle that I want to share with you. And that is that Every single sound has at least one special technique inside of it that you can learn. And if you craft a hundred sounds and you reverse engineer those hundred sounds, by the end of the process, you will have a hundred new techniques in your sound design skills arsenal. But there's a catch. And that is that you need good sounds. Otherwise, there's not going to be a lot of value in the process. And that's why we created this pack. Because with this, you can browse through the different sounds and learn how many different styles of sounds are built. And not even that, but it also goes a step further with all of the macros and different modulations that we added. For example, in this preset, we have this macro called Simpler. And we can see that this macro changes the wavetail position of oscillator A. And so this allows you to shape the sound. And then we also have this FM bass knob. And this changes the tone of the sound. And you can use this macro, find the different modulations that this has, and learn the key parameters that you need to tweak in order to change your sounds from this to this. And as I said, this pack also serves as a great toolkit because of these two macros that are in a lot of presets. The first one being the auto and then the second one being the manual. So lots of presets come with a default modulation. So you get a feel of how the sound could be applied. But if you bring it all the way down, now you have the opportunity to introduce a movement in a manual way with this macro. 
And you can experiment with different movements, for example, shape the sound to that, and then introduce your own rhythm into it. And it's not only this preset. With this one, for example, you can bring the auto knob all the way down, and then introduce your own movements with the manual macro, and see what parameters is this modulating, and see what parameters are being modulated by this macro that make this preset possible. So as you can see, we really wanted this to be one of the best ways in which you can learn drum-based sound design using X4 Serum. So that is going to be it for this video. I highly encourage you to get this new preset pack bundle so you can level up your sound design game. And that's going to be it for this lesson. If you liked this video and you found it useful, make sure you get subscribed to the channel, hit the notification bell to not miss any for future videos. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.